Welcome everyone. I'm Kenneth Tam. I was intrigued by a meatloaf recipe from a huge YouTube channel, and I thought I could also share with you something quite similar. So, do you know there are also meatloaves in Chinese cuisine? It is quite different from the Western one. It won't be as easy as my other recipes, and you do need some effort to make it. Well, I'm not sure whether or not you would make it at home after watching this video, but at least you can satisfy your curiosity about what a Chinese meatloaf looks like. Before we start, let's look at the fillings. They are used to add layers to the overall flavor and the texture of the meatloaf. Some of the most common fillings include the Chinese preserved mustard greens. They are sweet and salty at the same time, and the texture is like pickled cucumber slices. And then we have dried shiitake mushroom. I mean, rehydrated shiitake mushroom. We can also put water chestnut, which has a unique crunchy texture. For today, we are only using the mushroom and the water chestnuts, because I believe the preserved mustard green is rather difficult to be found in the U.S. Not sure about other places though. First, rinse the water chestnuts. The water chestnuts I got are freshly harvested, so they are coated with mud. And after cleaning, we have to peel the skin off. Peeled water chestnuts will turn brown when they are exposed in the air for a while. So, if you are not cooking them right away, you can soak them in water until you use them. Then we have to finally chop them. It is quite a fun process. What you need to do is to smack the chestnut hard and break it apart before you literally finally chop it. Remember to wear an apron. I'm a bad example here. The bits of the water chestnut will fly all over the place when you smack them. Next, we are going to finally dice the mushroom. Remove the stem. Slice them about 5mm thick. Julienne them. And then finally dice them. After all the work, here is what you should have. Next, we are going to prepare the sauce. Add a tablespoon of oyster sauce, a tablespoon of light soy sauce, a tablespoon of dark soy sauce, and half a tablespoon of sugar. We also need to add 2 tablespoons of water and half a tablespoon of tapioca starch, or cornstarch if you cannot find tapioca starch. Then mix well. The next step is to prepare the meat. Here I have got about a pound or 450 grams of rounded pork with 70% lean and 30% fat. We need the fat content to give our meatloaf the best texture we are looking for. Of course, you can go for 80% lean and 20% fat, but the texture of your meatloaf will be denser. Also, this is one of the few recipes that I need to wear gloves, because it'll get messy very soon. Roughly chop the grounded meat and then smash it with the back of the knife for about 5 minutes. This step helps to release the collagen inside the meat fiber. If you have got a heavy rolling pin, you can actually beat the ground meat with it. It has an even better effect than the back of your knife. But I don't, so I just use the handle of the knife to pretend as a rolling pin. In the authentic restaurant standard recipe, we need to mince down a whole piece of skinless pork belly into a paste. If you have watched my shrimp toast video, you'll know that many grounded protein recipes in Cantonese cuisine aim for a springy texture. To achieve it, we need to keep the meat fiber intact, so we are not going to use any food processor or blender. We can only use a knife to cut the meat into smaller pieces and then smack them into paste with the back of the knife. This takes about 10 to 15 minutes. After the tiresome smashing and beating, the grounded meat should become quite bouncy. Then put the patty in a bowl. But the hard work is not done yet. According to the standard of the Cantonese Culinary School in China, the meat loaf has to be springy but not dense. To achieve this, we need to stir our grounded meat in one direction, either clockwise or anticlockwise, until you develop a sore arm for about 15 minutes. Anyway, I'm just going to do it for 5 minutes. 
This step is to align the meat fibers so that they can pack tightly and to form microscopic pockets that can trap moisture inside. Do not use a stent mixer. The figure 8 motion of the attachment will disturb the muscle fibers alignment. In the middle of your stirring, mix in your sauce in two batches. You can see how much liquid the raw meat can absorb. If you feel that the meat is a little bit dry, you can always add a splash of water to it. After the sauce is well mixed, you can finally add the side ingredients into your meat. And then mix well again until everything is well combined. Before you actually develop a sore arm, let's move to the next step. We need to toss the meat into the bowl hard several times. This step is to drive out the air bubbles and to pack the meat even tighter. Now, the meatloaf is finally ready for steaming. Plate the meat patty on a plate, flatten it and make a hole in the middle. It enables the meat to be cooked evenly. Bring a wok of water to a boil and place a steaming rack inside. When the water is vigorously boiling, put your meatloaf into the wok. Steam for 7 to 10 minutes depending on the thickness of your meatloaf. For this one, I'm going to steam it for 9 minutes. After 9 minutes, take your meatloaf out, then sprinkle some chopped scallion as garnish. And the Chinese steamed meatloaf is done! Here is a technical summary. First, in order to get a springy texture, you have to smack the ground pork with the back of your knife or rolling pin for 10 to 15 minutes. Then, you must stir the ground meat in one direction to align the fibers so they can trap moisture. In the last, you have to adjust the amount of water when you are stirring the meat. Add some more water if the meat is too dry. Enjoy your meatloaf if you are really trying to cook it. I believe you can also train your arms with this recipe. If you have any questions, comment below to let me know. If you want to learn more about authentic Chinese recipes and cooking secrets, subscribe to my channel. Also, check my other videos for fresh and rarely seen recipes. I'll be uploading regularly. See you next time!